terms of gains. Uh, Webber Sangvi is with us, CEO at Ask Hedge Solutions. Webber, good to have you with us here. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, you know, I'm <clears throat> just wanted your thoughts on uh, the entire sort of the PSU rally that we've seen, uh, Webber. You know, if, if something, in a, especially something like a PSU, which didn't do very well for years and on end, right? Because there was a perception, there was a perception problem as well. But a lot of those things started to change. Uh, it started with banks, essentially SBI, spread to other areas. Then there was defense, then there was railways. I mean, who would have thought? And typically what happens is if price moves up in a sector which you've typically st stayed away from and moves up sharply, I mean, you know, you, you're, you're frozen, right? You're looking at the price go up, but you can't buy it. Uh, because uh, uh, A, you did not really sort of uh, own it at any point in your investing career. And B, you're doing something new and price has already moved up. Uh, what, what's the best way? I mean, if there is more here, I mean, mutual funds are still launching PSU funds. For example, the Quant uh, PSU NFO is closing today. Would you recommend uh, sort of retail common uh, investors to put allocate some money in these funds? See, Prashant, I think you you bang on target in the sense that uh, because you know you've seen uh, you know over a very long period of time that PSU basket you know typically behaves in a particular manner to kind of break out from those kind of ranges and when you are looking at a new price altogether, uh, you know it's it's kind of a moment where you it's very difficult to grapple uh, what further decisions to be taken. The way we would probably look at uh, you know on this basket is. We will identify probably the industries where the structural reforms have, uh, you know, have been happening. In addition to a good policy support, uh, which is coming about now, something like a Make in India (PLI) uh, or probably, you know, uh, oil and gas reforms, which have kind of happened in terms of price mechanisms. I think uh, identify those sectors where you know there is a catalyst from where uh, you know value, uh, which has always been the case. Uh, has a possibility of unlocking it as well. So uh, this is where we would probably focus on and, uh, you know, getting too bogged down in terms of the historical valuations and historical price band uh, would probably, you know, make it even more difficult to kind of participate in this whole rally. Actually, it's like phases, right? The first phase is disbelief. Then you start to say, well, uh, you know, this is, we've seen the story many times. It'll all promptly come down. I don't know what phase. Are we in phase three? <laughs> or uh, this is something really new, right? It's, this time is really different in that sense. Uh, can you really argue for, you know, private sector multiples for many of these PSU uh, kind of companies because governance, et cetera, has improved? And arguably it has. Uh, cyclical, I mean, for example, banks, right? Maybe uh, credit costs will not remain as low. It's not possible. Uh, things are cyclical, so credit costs will rise. But can you argue for names like at least the big ones, SBI, BOB, et cetera, for multiples about one and a half, two times? I don't know, Webov. Your thoughts? No, Prashant, which is where I would probably say that, you know, when everybody clubs every PSU under the same umbrella in terms of everything has to rally, uh, then there is an opportunity of, you know, uh, distinguishing between uh, what should ideally move or probably one, what should have, uh, you know, not moved, uh, you know, at all. So there comes an element where uh, how to distinguish is, you know, extremely important purely because then if some, God forbid, something kind of probably adverse happens, um, you know, then the subsequent crash or subsequent kind of price movement can be very, very painful. So stick with those sectors uh, where, as you rightly mentioned, that there's a change in terms of governance, uh, then change in terms of an outlook towards expansion, growth, uh, and is being supported well by the policy measures and structural reforms. Let's take that conversation one step further. You know, you have PSUs across various sectors. They're in banks, oil marketing companies, oil refiners, defense, uh, railways. Amongst these sectors, which is a sector where there are still tailwinds? You know, structurally, as you pointed out, there's growth momentum. No, I think, see, uh, you know, what we have seen in terms of making India program and defense-led uh, kind of industry, I think uh, there is long tail, uh, you know, there's a, there's a long tailwind here in terms of uh, we will see these, uh, you know, continuing in terms of order inflows, higher indigenization, uh, and so on and so forth. So that support will remain. In addition to that, I think uh, in OMC companies, if the prices are kind of not kind of intervened, I think there is some further leg uh, in terms of uh, their movement 
Uh, so those are the sectors and areas we would probably focus on. Whereas in case of uh, PSU banks, we are not as yet a very firm believer in terms of uh, whether we want to have the uh, price to book multiples as equal to your private uh, sector banks. So uh, that that is where our probably view will probably differ. Okay, hi, uh, Vaibhav. Good afternoon. Good to see you and Nigel on this side. A couple of quick questions. You know, our markets were running up on hope of earnings. And this past season's earnings haven't been bad, right? I mean, it's been pretty okay. The problem is top line growth hasn't been uh, that good, which could tell you that going ahead, there could be a bit of a scramble for market share that hurts margins. Do you think that anticipated earnings will actually be able to fall short out there? Because that's the biggest driver ultimately. No, of course, Nigel, I think... Uh... Uh, what we've seen in the last two quarters, there has been a massive tailwind in terms of the margins. And because of which we have seen very decent earnings from the corporates. Now, going forward, what do we think that given the light that, you know, you know, overall consumption is kind of a little bit weakish, uh, where uh, corporates will start kind of, uh, you know, eyeballing or probably focusing on the market share at the cost of uh, margin as well. And as raw material prices also kind of start moving up uh, in the coming quarters, we do expect that uh, there is a possibility where we have already seen the best of the margins. Uh, and, uh, you know, we may see probably that as expected, uh, you know, in terms of the earnings growth, which is about 14, 15 percent, you know, by the street for the next few years, uh, we may be marginally disappointed in terms of the overall earnings, how it can turn up. Uh, which is which will also lead to the overall market movement as well, purely because we do strongly believe that the markets will follow earnings uh, from here onwards, as as because the time of regrading has got over. Uh, even if it maintains those kind of valuations, then may be disappointed by the earnings in 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 the next few years. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Weber, hi, afternoon. Then, sort of sum it up for us on the long side. What are the you know key bets that you're going with right now in terms of if not stocks at least just thematically, what would be the top longs then as of now? See, I think from uh, when we talk about long, uh, you know, uh, on the portfolio basis, uh, as against our earlier view where we you know really thought that global markets are kind of crashing, uh, what we are uh, seeing is basically an evidence of soft landing actually happening and probably the interest rate cuts not as quickly uh, coming as quickly as uh, everybody would have expected. So from a global standpoint where uh, earlier we thought that global economy is crash, here in, is where we do think that uh, we are turning slightly uh, you know, uh, bullish in terms of the technology sector uh, where we do see that uh, you know sector is kind of bottoming out. At the same time, from a local perspective, uh, there may be a tactical trade on the private banks purely because they've been hammered. Uh, but I do think from a medium to long term basis, we'll focus on industrials, renewables as the opportunities where uh, we would probably ideally want to place our bets on. Okay, you just to you know complete that point, you said okay. uh, private banks, but that's only a tactical trade. So you think that uh, more on a more fundamental basis, uh, the Spain is going to last for a while, this underperformance? See, uh, let's let's kind of be, uh, you know, from a overall sector basis, let's analyze in the, in the sense that we have seen the best of the asset quality at the time of, you know, best of the margins as well. And, uh, and given the light that incrementally, we may see some amount of deterioration in terms of the asset books. Uh, at the same time, margins kind of getting compressed. Uh, my sense is basically on an overall sector basis, we do think that, uh, you know, it would be neutralish or probably, you know, in line performer with the markets uh, rather than what we used to earlier assume in terms of being our performer. So, uh, of course, the valuation is slightly in terms of their support. Uh, but from the earnings standpoint, I think this this is a segment where we may see some amount of downgrades going forward. OK, all right, uh, <clears throat> Weber, we leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure having you with us here on CNBC TV 18. Thank you for joining us. We'll take a quick commercial break here.